retired professor from Alabama, and um, I have a special connection with the art because I have a son with special needs, so this is a really exciting project to be working on. Great group of students. Um, as I was saying, this was their culminating experience for a minor called the Art and Environment minor. The last run, the last hurrah for this particular program at the college. So it's a wonderful project to go with. And I'm going to turn it over to Renee. The students will introduce themselves as they talk. We're going to do, we're, we're going to just share a very, a very brief presentation. Figured it'd be easier, the images would be larger. And then, uh, and the lights are going to be off during that so you can see things best. And then after they're all done, we're going to ask people to um, move to the tables, possibly, kind of go with the flow. But we have sort of, um, we want some interaction with ideas and responses. And so we can decide whether it's best to have the conversation here or whether to move. Okay? Great. So Renee, I'm sure. I'll the lights. You want me to play? I got it. Oh. Fantastic. All right. Welcome, everyone, to our presentation. Um, we're students from Allegheny College and Professor Geffen's Art and Environment class. Throughout the semester, we have met up with community members, art individuals, and design experts. Um, through these meetings, we were inspired to develop a variety of conceptual designs for green space across the street. Our main goal is, well, our main goal is to create a community venue where art individuals and others from the Meadville community can safely gather and form natural relationships through collaborative participation in arts, culture, and community events. Oh, could you go back just a second, please? Um, uh, some other goals that we have as far as design goals um, include developing an aesthetically pleasing green space in downtown Meadville, demonstrate best practices through placemaking, stormwater mitigation, and adaptive reuse, uh, as well as celebrating Mill Run as an important cultural amenity throughout revealing the stream, connecting the arts and culture partners in shared planning for use of the site, create a venue for community-wide events, and position the site as a destination for visitors and guests of Meadville. So, uh, hi guys, uh, I'm John, nice to meet you guys. So before we start to talk about our conception joints, we would like to talk about a bunch of ideas that we found either online or during our research that actually forms our final designs. The first one we talk about is called a Pay Park from New York City. It's designed as an outdoor room by using all these tree canopies and uh, green walls. It tends to create a kind of uh, ex escape from urban city and make people who stay in there to experience uh, nature, even though they're living in the urban area. And this play park is one of the big elements that we all, most of us use while we were doing the conception joints. So I'm going to talk a little bit about stormwater capture. I'm Annie, and this is a photo from a place in Seattle, actually, where it rains a whole bunch. So it makes sense to have something like that in Seattle. And it also rains a whole bunch in Meadville, as you all know. So the water is sort of is directed in the same general direction down to one central area where it can be uh, filtered and then could ultimately go back into Mill Run, but it'll be filtered once it goes back to Mill Run. So we wanted to demonstrate some best practices with stormwater capture and reuse based on that. Here's another example uh, we took away. We actually got the, um, we were able to Skype with a, an artist, an eco artist, Stacey Levy, and she has a bunch of uh, artworks that are like this and a lot of like landscaping. Um, to mitigate with best practices for environmental use as well as for community placemaking. We also have space here that is available. Um, just like once you uh, put a lot of, uh, once you be put beautification to a space, um, it opens up the idea for other types of 
opportunities such as having more murals. So as you can see here, there's a mural that's beside the Park Avenue Cinema and obviously it looks as though there's some more um, opportunity for more murals to happen along this area. Hi, my name is Brady and I'll be talking about how in a lot of our drawings we have the concept of highlighting or daylighting it. Um, so getting into, we're gonna, now we're going to look at our different designs that we came up with. There's a bunch of different um, processes we took to get to where we are with our final designs that you see on the wall over here. Um, when I was first working on this design, I was bringing up a lot of different of uh, Stevie Levy, Stacey Levy's um, works and how she was working with uh, rain garden collect and water collection, stormwater collection, those regards. And we also were paying attention to the idea that um, when when you have a street space as such, and like during winter time, there's going to be a lot of uh, salt that gets onto the, the sidewalks and the streets. So we want to protect the green space from that type of interaction, um, having natural barriers such as like boulders or trees, for example. Um, this was a very conceptual design in the beginning, and we also weren't aware at the time that there was a potential to daylight Mill Run, which we'll get into a bit of what that could look like for the site, because um, Mill Run is underneath the site that we were working with. So here's one of the conceptual drawings that we had that shows the daylighting of Mill Run. So these cutouts, these triangles here around the zigzag, they're possibilities for opening up the stream. Now, the zigzag is actually a path from the stage, so if you're performing on the stage, then you can walk out along the path. And the lines around are showing sort of a labyrinth-esque design, which goes from low to high in an amphitheater type style. So this was one of our designs that showcases the actual daylighting of Mill Run and how we can show the water. Hi everyone, my name is Anna. So um, as Annie was just saying, we started to conceptualize our designs with uh, the idea of opening up segments of Mill Run. And also this terrace uh, landscape for the site became one of our most popular designs and actually something that we all integrated into our most recent uh, concepts for this site. And so the one that I have here has the stage as a sort of central point alongside Mill Run, and you have the terraced landscape starting with the lowest point around the stage, and then the land contours like outward and upward. And then um, it's also angled toward Mill Run so that any rainwater can flow through the site and be purified by the plants and other you know, greenery, and then um, it goes into the stream. So you don't have like direct runoff from the parking lot going directly into the stream. You have it purified first by the, um, by the plants and greenery. So this is a concept that me and John worked together on because our ideas were similar. And our main focus is with the amphitheater, which is right here, and then the stage and the storage, and then the highlighting and daylighting of the so uh, first, first the biggest point of our drone is this amphitheater. Like you guys may not see this clear in the picture, but we got a very cool model over there, which you guys can see it later. So it's actually uh, as as far as things goes up this way, it's level, it's keeping level up. So it kind of makes people easier to. See sit and where else there's a performance going on and the stage the M series gonna mostly be covered by uh, green gases green grasses so uh, what happened is that when it's raining this amber series structure is easy to collect rainwater and guide them to the mountain and the second thing I'm gonna talk about is the pathway so as you see here there are two pathways across the mail road and I set them as bridges because I mean why we have bridges here because there's a mail road beneath it so what people usually do is that when, when there's a bridge when there's a river would be a bridge so the bridge is kind of highlight to show that there's a mail road under and the left part is a place where people where we have tables and flower gardens where people can sit and hanging out and having all kind of activities 
Um, so this is uh, my final design. I'm, I'm still in the process of it, working on it a little bit more, but you can tell the structure here. Um, we've got a bit of daylight in here going on. This is where the water is, and then what, to our understanding, there are steel, or not necessarily steel, but there are beams that are holding um, the structure in place for Mill Run to be running underneath, underground. Um, and we talked with actually another landscape designer about how we could open that up and those steel beams can still be present there. It can touch on the industrial um, history of the town. And along with that, we have, um, this is potential design for highlighting the run, which could be done uh, through painting. And there's different types of paint that you can use to um, make it so it will stay more substantially. Um, these kind of dots along here also annoy to um, lighting that could possibly be put there and that could uh, there's a bridge nearby I believe in Savior Town that also has like LED lighting to bring some historical like uh, highlighting very uh, literally to the site um, and then we've got the stage here um, but I what I'm touching on here is the fact of how vendors and how important they are to Meadville to French Creek and the area, um, along with um, some crayfish there as well. As there's potential here that we've talked a bit about for having trees, having rain gardens scattered about, and then I've also touched on the idea of the amphitheater style we have by the stage. Um, so thank you. And along here, there's this is a potential for um, some bush or shrubbery that could help act as a buffer between the green space and the sidewalk and road. So now we're going to transition into another approach to designs. Instead of having the drawings, we also have a, um, a digital design. groups to gather ideas, to find out what people thought should happen in the space and how to connect it to the larger community and also make it work for the art schools. And one of the things that came up is a desire to move um, or make space in this site for the outdoor concerts that um, some folks have been putting together in the parking lot just out back here. And so that's what the stage is in reference to. It's of looking at um, finding a way to create a, a more permanent performance space for those kinds of venues. Now who's got it? <laughs> Hello, sorry about that. My name's Hunter. Uh, I took a slightly different approach to uh, doing the concept of this arc site. I did a 3D model system called SketchUp to build my site design. This is more of a final design compared to theirs where well, they were working on their concepts. I was working on this throughout the last past couple of weeks. Uh, this is my idea of highlighting the run right here through this structure. Have a nice little pathway flowing through the site like this. It also, this is a, like almost a mirror image of French Creek and how it runs next to Meadville, which is a cool idea. Uh, this light blue is just my idea of highlighting the run for us on the pavement. <coughs> and fish also highlighting the run. I have a nice little picnic area over here, wherever wants to eat lunch here, or whatever time of day. I have a nice little like rain garden right here, I designed. I have a whole bunch of bird houses and plants to help soak up the rain when rain comes. I have a stage right here for any and all sorts of activities that happen. Also have facing the parking lot, so anybody if you guys have a lot of people coming, you can overflow into the parking lot. <coughs> so, this is my idea. Don't forget about the cornhole. <laughs> oh, and the uh, little recreational. Those are recreational opportunities. It's a big one. Oh, and I have LED lighting here that's powered by solar panels, which is a cool idea for the highlighting the stream during the nighttime, which would be really cool for walking through the site at night. Now we're going to open up to discussion. So 
get you out of the dark. <laughs> outside the box. Um, what, what are you looking at for seating arrangements on the number of people that can house an entertainment there? Do you have any ideas? Well, we haven't done, we haven't done the numbers, but we, we have some sense. Do you want to jump in? Yeah, and, and one thing to keep in mind when we're thinking about this, we had something big going on. This white space over here is all parking that we could remove the cars from on nights and weekends, and it would be all just open asphalt, very safe, very level. And so if you had a big enough event, you could have people back in here with lawn chairs and stuff. So that's why that's why the stage is facing how it is. So we can utilize the space all the way over uh, to our street. So we could hold a huge number of people, probably more than what is held already behind us, if anybody's ever been in the So I think for that Yeah, because they tend to bring their own chairs and stuff. So that's why we designed it this way, to utilize that space to move. We only have about 10 cars when we're not open during the week, we can just move those cars and have access to that whole space as well. So we can hold hundreds of people. I think the concept is great, especially if you can bring food trucks in. Yes. yes. Where, where you're going to be able to supply more of a need. Yep. The goal is we'd like to see as council is to see more people coming into Meadville. You get into Meadville, you start spending money and, and realizing what we've got to offer. Right, right. Um, when we first discussed this, that, that was kind of a yeah, and some of you may not know, but if you walk out back, they've already had a little park that they designed in the last couple of years that um, Jason Old Landscaping helped them with putting papers down and very nice design out there that already walks and highlights that part of the crib. So this would, in fact, tie right in with that right across the street. Also, um, Mayor Stearns, one of the things that with this um, amphitheater idea is that 
people could put chairs on those terraced areas so there would be the opportunity for seating in there. Not everything would function as a rain garden or a stormwater collection. We don't really want to retain water because we don't want to create a hole that's going to bring more water in. We just want to have a system that directs the water through a series of planted areas that per allows some percolation time as well as filter filtering. Yeah. Can I? Yep. Just curiosity question. Um, is the upper portion level with the street? Are we utilizing the basement? No. No. The okay, basement so is going to be starting at grade level and then going <laughs> up. Um, Probably not as extensively as you're at. Yeah, no, it would be reduced down. So when they do it, we're going to take out everything and have it reduced down to just a slight slope rather like, slope. Do we know how it's far? about it's <laughs> uh, along this along Market Street? There's about a 12 or 18 inch high footer, and we are envisioning elevating that a little bit. Um, partly because we want to buffer from snowplow through with, with the salt, you know, the salt and the snow, et cetera. But so. it is going to be visible from the sidewalk. Like everything that's in oh, the park. Yes, yes, it'll be just small. Yeah, just okay. like it I is now. Yeah. You say amphitheater, I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. So that's, no, no. Yeah. That's, that's probably a, you know, gives you an idea of something with much greater scale. And we're, we're thinking of a very modest snowplow. So more like the arboretum in, in, the area, in, in the area where they have that gradual slope and the stage. But again, probably not as high as that. Okay. Right. Because that there was that one was really high, but it starts out as a nice gradual thing. You put a lot of people on it. Right. Yeah. But that's that's landscaped into an existing slope. Okay. And so that was designed specifically for that grade. All right, so that when I say it's going to take us a while to do the engineering and the hydrology to figure out what this needs to be, right now we don't really know, but I don't see it going. Right, and um, I'm not sure we want to put some of the population that we have who are sometimes unstable on their feet. You know, we don't want to look like huge. Yeah, okay. and there would be a walkway in the back which would be handicapped accessible to get back to the stage over the parking lot. So we thought of that too. And murals on the back of the center. Yes, and if, I would encourage you when you go out tonight, Go out this way, and I hate to say ugly, but now that we've exposed it, it's ugly. And actually, Amaro's already working with the Snodgrass people who are repo housing to do a nice mural. So now the thought is to tie that mural all the way across the back of those buildings that exist to really make that look pretty. So that's a whole nother thing that we're working on. The owner doesn't really care. Then, then Tom Stout is interested in, he has the building on the alley, uh, and the student showed you the other building which Bill Lawrence's space is in. So there's some really nice buildings that we could put some simple murals on with some history of Meadville, and we're certainly open to that idea. Um, I mean, that, the one that Mark just mentioned, the building the back of the Lawrence's building, that building, that whole sequence of buildings, even the back of the cinema, is angled the way that it's angled because when, when Mill Run gets to this point, it takes a sharp northward turn, and the, those buildings were built along the, the old canal, the Mill Run Extension Canal. Right? So that's why they're angled that way. That was before we would uh, channelize and build over these natural natural systems. So um, that building is a great opportunity to highlight something about the, uh, the, the canal. Mark, I have another question yes. for you. And the way this is designed is with the cinemas still yep. being on yep. that property. <laughs> Are we? Are you thinking in, in the future what happens if that building comes down yes. or redesigned? Yes, we are thinking of that building, which I don't know that that building, it's, it's no secret, it's going to continue in the business that it's currently in. Um, it's just not a good profit model, and so they're struggling at this point. That's no secret anyway. Right. Um, so hopefully they make it, but if they don't, we have a vision for what we would do there as well to make that maybe a, the space where you saw it stage where we can store some things in and do that. Right now, the concerts that go on out back here, the gentlemen come in every weekend and have to carry from our basement down and set up that stage, and it's pretty tedious work there. So maybe we can have something where things are stored over there. 
cornhole or horseshoes or other things that are stored right within that containment to make it a nice space. And if that building would come down and nothing goes into that, that area, yeah. you know, you're going to have a, a complete view all the way from Park Avenue right down to... Yeah, we uh, had a local area. engineer come down to help us with how we could highlight some of the crit, and he was more excited about the view, just the outstanding view if you would not have that building there and what you would see going through a huge part of downtown Bebo and how awesome that would be. Yeah. So. so that's also part of the idea. You'd also be, oops, sorry, you'd also be exposed to a lot more road noise, so. Yeah, so I think you'd have to look at a design of some kind of building. And if you go back, can you put yours up? Yeah. If you go back to that, he had a stage that could kind of be a buffer, and so you could have a stage there with some kind of maybe even a wall of, of some level. <coughs> better to think about it. That's that's probably a, a next project after this. Right. Probably at this point, we're, we're not going to even put a stage in. We'll have the area and we'll keep going with the way we're doing it until we see what happens. Um, I think that that was, from my perspective, I don't know if you guys would agree, but I think that was one of the challenges for us mm -hmm. is how do you design for a project like this when you really you, you want to keep it flexible enough so that it meets the community needs. You want to make sure you get it right, which is the beauty of not having something from outside the community come in and say, boom, top down, here's your plan, right? So that it can grow organically. But then knowing you're in the class, you've got to come up with something but you don't know what the future of this other area is. So we try to keep it really flexible. Um, and we've made some suggestions. Maybe there's, maybe there's a, if, if you take this as the, the front of Park Avenue, probably isn't quite accurate, but if you were to think Park Avenue is right there, maybe there's some kind of small building that maintains the facade of the streetscape that has some need, that can meet some need in, in the local community. Um, either for whoever owns the site, or maybe it, maybe it is open and to deal with sound, you create a berm and you plant some extra trees, so you make it beautiful in a different way in terms of retaining the, the character of the, of the streetscape. And then maybe that stage should sell. Right. We had also talked about like in the interim period where we didn't really know like if we had the stage where we have it in our design, if it was possible to have like a chalk mural or something behind whoever's performing that was customizable, would wash away with the rain, something very easy to take care of, like low maintenance in the interim period. I think is this the second or third year for this concert series out here? Maybe the third year. Third year, I believe. Yeah, so I so. and they have had some real synergy of keeping this concert series going. So when they found out our project, they were very excited to try to tie in. So that's why we've tried to incorporate this to maybe have that. Because our space would actually be a little bit bigger than this back here. And then that parking could go towards some of the businesses. You know, Voodoo has the business at night once a day, like that parking. We wouldn't take away from that. Um, so their hope is to keep this going. The gentleman who's running this is committed to do this for a while, but not forever. And he's hoping that this catches on and takes off and we have our space with electricity and all that stuff that we can continue to go and grow, grow this for our community. Mark, I, I take it, first of all, I think opening yeah. up Mill Run would be great. I think that's, you want something unique that's going to be bring people down, which then also helps with the Bicentennial Park. Yes. The re you know, what we're planning on doing yeah. for Bicentennial. Um, and I like the lighting. Lighting, I think, is going to be really important, especially for safety at night, um, leaving, coming to the concerts. Um, so I, myself, yeah, open that up as much as you can, as we can get away with, uh, to make that look nice. There's a big initiative in Erie, and the, the big push in Erie, if you know where the McDonald's on Peach Street is, all that's coming down, including the McDonald's. And they, the talk is to do away with dark spaces, as they call them, because dark spaces obviously invite problems at night and when there's less people out to, to secure things. So this would open things up and make it very safe for those people walking in this area, one thing, and very community friendly. So that's the big push of, of people living in cities is to have some safe, open spaces, uh, not too far from them. And we showed some solar lighting, I think in Hunter's design and Renee's designs also that would um, just, would showcase some more best practices because that would tie into the college as well because we're, we have a lot of sustainable features. 
when you're designing your lighting, if you are planning on the film series, yeah. keep in mind the directions that they're yes. going so that So that's you, something we would have to look at. Yeah. And it, that's we're very excited about this Davies Leaders because we're going to, whether this site is ready to go for this year or we have to do it in the back part of the month, we're going to do a couple pop up events just to get people fired up about the synergy and the energy of this thing and, and get the community together with our individuals uh, making natural relationship and just we're excited about this opportunity. So we'll get a couple events going this summer with the help of our Davies leader and uh, we really look forward to this. So we do have, do you go, we have some uh, Yeah, just thinking about like looking at this, a couple things that come to my mind, things that I would want to like enjoy. Mm -hmm. I think the terrace is a really good idea. Um, the like lawn chair culture that happens around here, like at concerts can be yeah. really like restrictive. Like at the diamond, if you're sitting on the ground behind people, it becomes really difficult to see even what's on that elevated platform. Um, so having the grade there, I think it's a great component. Um, considering those like long, like kind of lateral games, whether it's like, you know, the horseshoes or yes. like, figuring how that would work so that each point, you know, is on the same plane. Yes. Um, is, might be kind of tricky. Um, and I think, yeah, utilizing the parking lot next to this park and being able to use that stage um, yeah. to, to both direct the sound to this one kind of green space, but then for overflow as well. I mean, yeah. just looking at it, those are kind of the sticking points that I think are really important. Do you mean this parking lot or the one across the street um, adjacent to no, the parking lot on the corner of Market yeah, and Arch. Yeah. So the, the newer parking lot. Yeah, newer that's, that's, right? that's, that's right. That's which is kind of like right. to your right. It's right yes. here. Yeah. 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 And so that's one of the thoughts, Peter, is if we did like, let's say Cornhole, yeah. we had this whole nice level, clean asphalt okay. surface yeah. that we could have Cornhole games with people seated back here to enjoy. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think other seating options like picnic. <laughs> yes. And not a, you know, just a couple um, where people are able to like grab a lunch, eat it yeah. outside. And there have been talks, uh, some events with the solar power to, for people to charge with electronics or okay. something like that. That's that's also been mentioned. Yes. This is not so constructive, but more so affirmative. All of your designs are really beautiful, and I'm really excited for this. And um, it could be really cool. Like I see potential for like uh, maybe generating interest in more town hall meetings or smaller gatherings of people and like keeping things so like maybe in the summers we have meetings here and that gets people more interested in participating in like town hall meetings as well as like being in nature so it generates excitement for yeah there's all kinds of different activities that's a great point you know that we can do that i've actually got calls from people who want this done like tomorrow because they have events that, that's going on tom hall has a community uh group that wants to do outdoor things for kids with autism and wants to do outdoor theater and it's just you're welcome to do whatever you have, whenever we have this available. We don't have it, we can always clear the cars out of the parking lot and do it there, but they want to do some things, get kids outdoors again, get them doing things. You know, when it's nice down here, it's really nice. Um, you go down to Florida this time of year, you can't be outside. Here, it's beautiful, beautiful nights, it's 80 degrees. Um, let's get out and enjoy our space here. Yeah, so we're, I mean, if you know the community groups that we ought to reach out to, or we've been in contact with the legal council and the arts, the neighborhood center, my people, um, uh, some preliminary conversations with the various theater groups. Um, you know, so if there's other other groups that you think that you suggest we reach out to, we definitely want to know that. Maybe it's like the master gardeners. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yes. thought about them doing that. Thought about uh, at some point doing some things that are vegetable oriented, so you could actually pick them and do as in town and do some things that day. Have you named it? No. No. You got a suggestion? No. <laughs> We've been just calling the project since last summer. Renee worked with me on and another student on designs for some of the murals ideas, and we just have been calling this loosely. Um, Mill Road murals and more. Right. Oh, all right. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, there. Will the park be ARC? Yeah. True. Will it be? No, no, as a name. As a name. <laughs> P A R C, the park. Oh, as the ARC. How about it? <laughs> okay. 
from that. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, we're certainly open, but we're excited to have this be a community our, our space. Park. And already it's been a great community venture with, with these students giving up part of their semester to do this, this course for us. It's been invaluable for us now to have a Davies leader who's going to sign on to help us. Allegheny's already buying into this. And I know that a lot of the other businesses will be excited to do this. You know, we have a couple of coffee shops. Wouldn't it be nice in a June day to get a cup of coffee and come out and just sit in a nice, peaceful space with some beautiful plants and trees? Um, so okay. I think it's going to really catch on. Right. We're hoping it'll connect to other plants. You mentioned Bicentennial Park the ideas that Roger's group is working on, and we're providing other voodoo, this idea that's been long-standing about some trail, walking trail, liking trail, what like have you, that would get you from the Earth's Trail through downtown. So that was where we thought it's really important that this function as a destination, and that it showcase really best practices for community work. Well, and then you're going to have, hopefully, you know, the train museum. Yes. So all that can be connected, you know, the southern part, what I call it, with the western part. Absolutely. Part That's city. another great project. I, I want to thank the ARC for doing this. I know we had this conversation a couple months, three, four months ago. And I know our engineer was helping in that. Um, it's a great <coughs> project. I, I'm, I'm glad to see you're opening it to the community to, to use that. Yeah, and for people who don't know, I think, we bring a lot of activities in here. People don't know what the art does, but we have three people from school that come down for poetry class, and they come into this room, and nobody sees them. If they have poetry class outside on the nice days, or we have music class or movement class, they can have those outside on the nice days. And then for the nighttime events, for our folks to form natural relationships with community people. During the day, they're with our workers, and they have that natural relationship with them. They also don't have the relationships you and I do. When we go to church and we say hi to somebody, or we go to the gym and, and we see a friend that we see every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday when we go work out. Our individuals often don't have that chance. People don't connect with them that easy. And this is an easier way to connect if we have different events and people get used to seeing them. It's just a natural connection, which makes it safer for them. You know, a lot of our individuals are um, very self-sufficient. They come to the drop-in center six days a week and they hang out in this safe space in the front of our building um, so they live at the parkside commons or other places and come down here it's just it just adds to safety by knowing your other community members i had a question kind of regarding the daylighting i mean you think of all the like environmental health benefits to mill run to french creek um, but then you know there's all the like mental health benefits of being around you know the sound of yes. the water like what what are the barriers that kind of exist to that daylighting process like who else can we you know get like approach and like work with to try to make that happen i imagine it's really uh, an exhausting process to, it's um, really not that bad and actually porter's a local engineer the city has offered up to us he's been very helpful to come down and say yeah it's possible but here's how the structure is due to cut in between these beams show parts of it. So we're going to be inhibited in some ways, but in some ways we're not. It's going to be very easy to yeah. work with what's underneath. Okay. Just work with the bones of what's there. And some of you folks may not know, there was a study done years ago to talk about, to talk about opening up different parts of the creek all through the town. And so that study was out there to talk about what a synergy that would be. So maybe this will help Mark was involved with the space behind the market house where the creek was open. We have, we have plans for that started with what we did up at Shady Brook. And, okay. you know, other plans between Shady Brook and the hospital. And then Marquette picked up and did what they did right. by Walgreens. And this, um, you know, this whole no, no run initiative, seeing whether that pathway can be yeah. formed around that. Yeah, point. this seems like a good opportunity to, like, reignite yes. that. Yes. I, I do want to mention we've got $30,000 already committed outside of our funding. Marquette Savings has given $5,000 a year for five years, and the Casey's gave us money from last year's help, Halloween parade proceeds. So that money is already committed. And that's before we've even really done anything. Um, so I do think you know, we will look to write some grants about doing some of this. It's a very fundable project. And I think in terms of the daylighting question, um, I'll start it. We'll start conversations with the EP this summer and begin to figure out how they want to go about it. I mean, there's some 
things that we'll have to do, but they're not insurmountable. We did it in Market Alley. Um, it's it's doable. It just takes time. It's not a well, it's not a third. It's, it's not a drive-through fast food operation, right? Mark, um, I was just told I can't give any money away from the city. Uh, but what we can do is be supportive if you get grants. Um, whatever the city can do to support you. In kind. In kind yeah. to support yeah. you. Yeah. I'm sure. That, that's always good. very beneficial and helpful. Um, so don't forget we're there. Okay. Have you explored the use of like shipping containers as a cheap and easy stage, modified stage storage? Absolutely. We, we, we did think about it. I think we all felt like it was a little too square. <coughs> Wanted something a little more organic, but we haven't ruled it out. You know? Yeah, we'd be open to anything. Might be a temporary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is happening in bigger cities. It's really taken off where they've taken a, open up a space and use a storage container and do all kinds of neat things out of that. So it's really taken off across the country. I know we've touched a bit too on a lot of people are asking a lot about the stage, and I just want to reiterate too that we we're mostly just trying to get the bones and the structure of like the landscaping of the whole space first, but I feel as though um, in order to design a really appropriate and awesome stage for this site, that would require like a, you know, in itself its own design project, mm -hmm. so. What kind of time frame are you looking here? Did I miss it when I come Well, in here's our plan for this year. So if you're looking, um, this is back in the street. cinema. Is and this is market, that's back in the cinema. cinema. Uh, the creek right through here, we want to take the concrete all off here. There's a basement, and we would backfill the basement with appropriate fill, and then put the topsoil and put some soil down, then grass and some plants, just basic plants, because we're obviously probably going to redo this, and just get this back to our green space. On this side, we probably wouldn't do anything on this side at all. And then we would work towards designing the rain garden and how it would flow and do all these other things. Just it's going to be a several year project, but we hope for this year to get some of that ugly concrete out of there and, and uh, get that beautiful. I have seen things like this in other cities and it is very nice. Yeah. Another thing I was thinking, I, I reminded me when I was in Niagara Falls a couple of years ago, and they had like stuff that the kids could play with that was great big things. Mm -hmm. My kids were too big to play with them, yeah. but I could see little kids, and it was kind of neat things. And I remember thinking, I don't know if anyone else is going to be with us. Yeah, they do have neat things. That's a great thing. Like that. You can tell that's what they were trying to do, is just get something, a reason for you to stay. Yes. Yeah, and if, if anybody's ever seen Jenga, where they have the yes. huge outdoor mm -hmm. Jenga for kids of any age, you know, to do with different things like that, or the neat kind this of things. Is, yeah. That's, that's <coughs> just to look into it. Right. The sprinklers oh. to run through is another one with the, uh -huh. that uh, soft recycled tire mm -hmm. as a base and they have the sprinkler had yeah. to just shoot different times. Mm -hmm. It could be time to music, you know, for events. Mm -hmm. so. Mark, one other question I have. Yeah. Uh, I haven't been out with the prop in quite a while. Uh, Mill Run, I take it that that's a concrete cap on that? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then the dirt's on top of that? Yes. Now. So what is, we, did our engineer look at that cap? I mean, yep. So what he's committed to do is come out, have some of his guys drill us guide holes okay. so many feet out, and so we can cut just to there because we want to be careful not to crack that because then we have to go back and repair that and fill that. But so this is all going to remain concrete for now. Okay. So we would have a wall where we couldn't go past, and then we would look at um, daylighting. Part I just wanted to put the, the the cap on the the mill run, but. What condition is that cap in? Yeah, it's in, idea. it's in good it's shape. Good shape. Okay. He's just cautioning us to stay three to five feet back each side so you don't want your cracks to start. For the, for the, yeah, for the Will you have something natural then that's going to take if you open that up for safety reasons? Yes. Keeping people from yes. taking a dip in the pole. Fence. There'll be a fence and around it. And the talk is to tie into one of the other fences. He actually pointed out the fence down here, the fencing could be similar to this, or okay. there's other fencing in town. We'd like it to tie in something already exists. Good Sorry for all the questions. No, that's great. That's, that's what we're, we're here for. We, we want to make sure we're doing it for the community, and we don't have all the ideas. It's the community's ideas. <clears throat> is there a public restroom or a water fountain? There is not. Water fountain, we have yeah. to talk about. 
We have talked about that. The trouble with having an outside public restroom is very hard to maintain. As you know, the city had to close theirs inside an open building, which was security right next door. So, but they graciously have allowed an outdoor porta potty in previous years for the nice uh, weather for the summer events. So, and those can be put in the parking lot on the other side, so it yeah. doesn't take away from the, the yeah. venue now. Yeah, just because MNC has been doing that porta potty, is my understanding. Yes. You know, it is like, it would be attractive to people trying to walk the block and shop and yep. whatever. But I understand the security and upkeep. And, and that's something, that, you know, if this space back here did eventually open up, we could look at it when we do. If we did some type of wall, we could do something like what's up a road to park. That's, that's something we could certainly. I just want to throw one more thing in, John. I want to pick up where you were talking about. You know, when we were talking about Bicentennial Park, yes. putting the kiosk in with the local businesses and, and you know, with the QRI, whatever, whatever that is. I'm, I'm from the old fashioned. Is there some way that maybe you can get the local businesses to help to advertise, you know, small kiosks that would actually fit into the, the venue to give people the idea of, you know, if they want to go shopping, if they want an ice cream cone, if they want a cup of coffee, they can go up Chestnut Street. And I, I'm, I'm just throwing that out. You do a there some, right? you do some sort of because that would really help possibly the downtown businesses yeah. just the exposure. Yeah, and, and I will say that's a synergy we hope to tap into. The downtown businesses themselves have come in a couple of the group, you know, they do the catwalk and they've done some other events that have been very successful in bringing people back downtown at night. So, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, imagine the catwalk down the zigzag path or across the um, tail vendors, right? Mm -hmm. Right up to the stage. Mm -hmm. For those of you who aren't familiar, they had a little run from the mall downtown up, you know, to Diamond Park. Uh, point, five. Point, five. point five. Yeah, yeah. yeah. which was kind of neat. So they've come up with some other ideas, like, you know, Christmas kind of event. Um, mm -hmm. So there's some synergy. Oh, that'd be a great event. place for Santa. There you go. Okay. Christmas tree. How much does this design rely on the existence of the cinema? I'd like. Okay, we did. We did. We did plan on it being there or not being there because that's out of our control. That's a business owner that we hope they succeed. Or, but if they don't, we're prepared to do something to move on to. I'm not wishing anybody. Uh, you know. Yeah, I, I just mean it seems like. This particular one has a connection because the stage is right up against yeah. it. Yeah. But most of the other ones don't, don't you know, have left that wide, wide open. But even if that didn't, I think we're prepared to go out for other monies and do something to make this do a natural time. It doesn't. And what this doesn't show you is the buildings over here where the murals would be in the back of our parking lot as well. There's also possibly the opportunity to take some of the phones if this theater does fold, to take some of the existing bones of that and maybe maybe do like a, uh, a small snack kiosk that could have a restroom that could be open during times of large events you know something where yeah. you could yes and that would then eventually be your sound block as well because you would not have that traffic um, having had a business on Park Avenue that is a very loud street yeah so, and a very windy street. That is a really good point. And another important detail that we've been considering a lot too, is just that if there's the potential for the Park Avenue Cinema to um, not do its thing anymore, we would still want to be mindful that the streetscape that's there, because if we would just open that up, then that would look awkward, obviously. And then it looks awkward now. <laughs> oh, I mean, but, good point. But I, what I'm yeah. saying is, like, if there is a park randomly there, um, that's something that we would just have to consider a bit. Like, maybe there could be a, a smaller <coughs> shop there. That was something I was thinking. And if the cinema stays, it's a great. Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So we're and, and he's and he's more than happy to allow it, which yeah. is also great. Yes. Yeah. So that's good. It just needs about fifteen thousand dollars worth of structural work before you would want to put a mural on. <laughs> well, there's that. Yeah. 
can we have any fundraisers to help uh, put money in the project? Right now, Eric, I think we're, we're getting some grant money, so we're getting some money available, and we have some money set aside, prepared to do in the first couple of phases. But yeah, as we get into opening up the crypt and doing some other things, there may be some things. Okay. And maybe we do some events where we have some local business to sponsor a movie or something like that. We do have a couple of models. The students made two, two 3D models to try to understand a little bit more about the site in a different way. We also have um, site maps. So if you want to share a plan with us, we've got pencils. We did this the first one of the other events, a couple of the events that we've done with one here at the ARC, and we got a lot of interesting drawings that we called ideas from. And if you also, we've got note cards if you have suggestions that you want to write down. We've got a record of what you've said, be great suggestions for us. But we were also thinking this would be a little interactive for you rather than sort of the audience talking at you. Okay, one more. When are you going to start this project? Well, we have some people um, who coordinate with the takeoff the concrete. We're going to take out the first 10 feet this way and see what we're up against. How thick the concrete cut, how easy it comes out. We're hoping it comes out in solid chunks and they can take it away and dispose of it properly without so breaking it up. So we'll be starting here very soon. I just, want to, I just want to make one comment, and I think it's really important. And this is a perfect example of a college, um, New York, uh, people like Marquette that are coming together to work on this space. And I think that's important that, you know, a lot of people unfortunately don't realize if, if there's plans out there, there's, there's people that are willing to step up like Marquette. And um, unfortunately, there's always that city Allegheny doesn't partner together on. This is a perfect example where people like yourselves and people like Mark and, you know, and the mayor, when everybody works together, it benefits everybody, just like Sean said. You know, if we're taking something that big cities like Niagara Falls are doing and putting that kind of idea in. So I think everybody really needs to be complimented. And these young people here, I mean, they're you know, they're providing a resource to the city that, you know, is, is really beneficial. So I think everyone, you know, everyone in this everyone in this room is going really to be complimented. I appreciate you saying that because really we've been doing this kind of stuff for 20 years and the narrative that there is this disconnect is a narrative that we need to let go of, right? Because there's so many examples of community groups and organizations and banks and the college and the high school. I mean, Schaefer Park, the high school came up with what that path should be. They made that footbridge. The Votech students made that footbridge. So there's so many resources in a community of our size. We don't need to bring the experts in from outside. We can do it and we can scale it and time it so that it, it works and really serves the community. Well, is that actually what Allegheny is doing? They're actually, they're actually teaching the right. to be the experts. That's right. That's exactly that's the idea. Then they'll hopefully move back here, <laughs> uh, like some of the folks in the room, and keep contributing. Yeah, and not only have they helped in this class, we've had honor students at the ARC and other nonprofits have had honor students. Davies leaders are, are going to be, several sites are going to get in. The Center for Family Service got a Davies leader to help them with their social outreach. Our Davies leader is going to help with our social outreach for this project as well. So we're excited about all those different things that happen. Okay, well, after this is all done, who's going to maintain it? Well, going to be more uh, yeah, you're going to be on staff. You're going to be helping to keep this clean and safe. It right? figured. <laughs> it figured. I you can't even find that out. Hey, I do, I do on group bunk, so I just had to ask who's going to sit there and keep mowing the yard and that thing. Job security. There you go. Yeah, if I move that, he's going to pay me triple. <laughs> I don't say that. Triple. Job security. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, I guess yeah. I have a question. Sorry, yeah. is that are those lines representing gradation or steps? Yeah. Yeah, gradation. And that think think your thought was for the water to be yeah. falling down into this and then 
infiltrated back into the stream. Hunter, can you zoom in on that so they can see that it's like, you know, they can see a closer view of the little area? Very bad. You can put anything in there, really. Yeah, like I said, more work for me. Thanks a lot, Mark. Yeah, but like I said, he's going to pay me triple. <laughs> what that, are, that was our plan. That was our plan. <laughs> <laughs> what are those black bush things? They're just some sort of bush. Uh, some bush. In the skirt bush. Yeah, we, because once we get into the rain garden, we're really going to research this and figure out how to tear this down, what kind of plants to use, what, what works well in our <coughs> area. Um, and adding on to that, we do have access um, to a really awesome booklet that was provided from the French Creek Conservancy, and it lists a bunch of different um, rainwater plant or plants that are best used for rainwater gardens and also native plants. So we have that resource available to us. As I, um, I think that's also in itself, though, a little part of the landscaping design, um, kind of requires like its own time to come into fruition. Have you reached out to Marilyn Black? I don't know that I've ever heard of that. She's with the French Creek Conservancy. Okay. Um, she she, she's be, not. But she's <laughs> not? No. She's with the old Harry Creek. Oh, oh I heard she was with French Creek too. Andy is. No, I mean. Well, then reach out to Andy. <laughs> you done. Right. You done. Okay. But, and that's, that's one of the things our Navy leaders are going to do, try to reach out and make these natural connections with folks so we can all sit down and meet and make sure we're including all the experts. There's a lot of experts on a lot of different faces in this project that we hope to tap because it's a community project and make it something more private than this community. Yeah, it looks better than that concrete. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I do too. Because every time I go by there, I'm like, okay, there's concrete. Grass, parking lot. <laughs> I'd rather see that tear instead of concrete. Because yeah. I want more work. <laughs> That's this morning on the parking lot is only a five minute job. <laughs> but here it would probably take uh, about an hour. <laughs> or not even that. Well, it's finals week. Get out of the game. <clears throat> Next week? Next week. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. I want to take the time to thank these ladies and thank uh, Professor for doing this. And, uh